we're just going to eliminate the word, which I know may feel like I'm stating something really obvious here, and I am kind of stating something obvious here, but it's amazing how when we're so used to saying something in culture, it's hard to think about not saying it. It feels like it leaves a gap when really it doesn't. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Katherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hey everybody, how are you today? Welcome back, it's so good to have you here. My name is Katherine Hubert, I'm a disability integration coach. If you missed the video where we talked about what the heck that is, then you can check it out here. I don't know why I went to here, you can check it out, then that feels sketchy. Here, you can check it out here. But I'm excited today to talk about the term handicap, where it came from, when it started being associated with disability, is it appropriate and okay to still use the term, and if not, then what is its replacement? So we're gonna dive into that content today. As always, if you have thoughts, questions, opinions, please drop those in the comments below. Let's get started. The question and the term came up in a workshop that I did recently. Someone said, oh, my, my daughter said that I shouldn't use that term anymore. And then someone else in the workshop was like, really? And then we started a conversation around it. So I realized that there is some question or uncertainty around whether or not the term handicap should still be in use within our language. And then if it's not something, not a term that's being used anymore, then what is its substitute or replacement? So before we get into that, we're gonna do a brief history lesson. To be honest, there is a variety of opinion and information around this term and its origin on the internet. So I'm gonna give you kind of a rundown of several different origin stories and possibilities. There's some overlap between them. The gist of it is that you'll get the general context and understanding around where this term is coming from, how and why it got associated with disability, and then how and why I'm going to steer us away from that term and why in disability culture in general, these days we are steering away from the term. This traces back to like 16th, 17th, 18th century. There's a few different ways that the term handicap originally was used. It was not used or associated with disability initially. There are three different uses that I'm gonna to cover today. The first one is that the term actually meant hand in cap, like holding your, your hat in your hands, which is associated with begging on the streets for money. So that's one origin. Another one is that there's actually a game called Hand in Cap that was more of a game of chance. And there was some risk involved. And then, so that's kind of more in like 17th century, 18th century, the word started being associated with horse racing where they would handicap the faster horses, meaning that they would weigh them down so that they would go slower, it would kind of equalize the races a little bit more. That term is still used in golf, the term handicap. If any of you are golf people, then you can explain that in the comments below because I didn't do a lot of research into that because I'm not very interested in the game of golf. But those are kind of our three, our three places where handicap came from. So hand in cap, either as notating that someone was begging for money on the streets, so they're kind of down and out, they're disadvantaged, that's the societal viewpoint at least, hand in cap being a game of chance, and then handicapping a horse in a horse race, faster horses being weighed down with something heavy to make them slower. Keeping that in mind, hopefully you're already seeing a pattern here of, oh, if these this is becoming associated with disability, it's probably not in a super positive way. That being said, 
why did the term switch and become used to talk about disability or a disabled human? Again, that's where there's a little bit of speculation and where the history lesson gets just a little bit blurry. Like, it's inconsistent, at least what kind of led from this to this. But there are multiple different ties and reasons why handicap could have become associated with disability. One, if you're going with the hand in cap analogy of someone begging on the streets, that either a person with a disability needs to, they're in a position where they need to beg for money, they are unemployed, they aren't able to provide for themselves, therefore they're left at kind of the mercy of other people's donations or charity or pity in order to survive. Attached with that is also just the sentiment or the theme that someone with a disability is less advantaged than a person without a disability. So there's someone that we look down on or pity in our society. The game hand in cap in terms of a game of chance and risk, I think that's a kind of a loose connection. We could probably draw some themes or some parallels there. I'm not really gonna spend that much time on it because I don't think that that's probably the theme that's most prevalent. But then the last one, handicapping a horse, at some point there became a term associated with disability. If you're handicapping a horse in a horse race, then a disabled person was handicapped in the race of life. So there became this association of your disability, it slows you down, it pulls you back, it weighs you down, like this idea that you are, which is kind of twisted because in the horse racing, you're actually taking the fastest horse and intentionally slowing it down. And then when it's associated with disability, the idea is just that as a disabled person, you are naturally at a disadvantage or slower or less capable than a non-disabled human. So we've skipped the part where they were the, the faster, more superior to begin with. That part got eliminated from the, the theme and analogy. But those are kind of, that's kind of where handicap started being moved from culturally being used in these other settings to then being applied to disability, which is what has primarily been used for, you know, the past several hundred years. So all that being said, how do we feel about using the term handicap in modern day? Before we talk about all of our feelings about that, I want to do a quick word association. When I'm saying handicap, what images first come to mind? And we're going to pop up some images here that I think may be coming to mind since this is a video and it's not interactive, but some of the most commonly thought of or used forms of handicap or handicap is handicap accessibility are parking spaces. We're used to seeing the symbol, the handicap symbol, which is an outline of someone in a wheelchair. So there's a parking space. You also have handicap bathrooms, ramps, doors, like a power generated automatic door, elevator. Those are all structural things for the most part that people oftentimes associate with the word. We'll talk just a little bit today about how accessibility in general is a lot broader than simply structural things. But a lot of times I think when people are thinking about handicap or handicap accessibility, we are thinking about parking spaces, ramps, bathroom stalls, doors, elevators. Like those, those are some of the big ones. So it probably feels obvious at this point. There's a lot of negative connotation, stigma, stereotype, prejudice, bias, all of those things that have been associated with the origin of handicap being associated with disability and then using that in our language. So we want to discourage the use of that word because of where it came from and noting that disabled disability are much one more appropriate, fitting, kind, respectful ways of referring to disability. But then the question that I've gotten is, okay, well, if we're gonna remove the word handicap, we're talking about handicap parking spaces, handicap doors, bathrooms, etc. what do we say instead? We're just gonna eliminate the word, which I know may feel like I'm stating something really obvious here, and I am kind of stating something obvious here, but, it's amazing how when we're so used to saying something in culture, it's hard to think about not saying it. It feels like it leaves a gap when really it doesn't. 
number one, it's not even grammatically correct to say a handicapped parking space. That parking space isn't handicapped. It's an accessible parking space. So we can just call it an accessible parking space. The same with a bathroom stall. The bathroom stall isn't handicapped. The bathroom stall is accessible to wheelchairs. So we can say an accessible bathroom or an accessible stall. The same with an entryway or with a door. There's nothing specific about the door or the ramp or the elevator or the bathroom stall or the parking space other than it is accessible to someone with a disability in all of those cases, primarily someone who would be in a wheelchair. Again, that's where accessibility is not one thing and accessibility as a general construct can't be limited to just one thing either. Otherwise, we're not really accessible. We'll do a video some other time because we're gonna run out of time today to talk about how accessibility we can use in a lot of different areas and what that might look like to have a space concept, a building, a business, etc., that truly is accessible. But as you're thinking through eliminating the word handicap, replacing it with accessible is appropriate. It's more fitting in terms of describing what's actually happening and it's very neutral, which we approve of. So handicap, not great associations. We can go ahead and dismiss that from society in terms of talking about disability, disability or disabled, perfectly fine terms to use. They just are the terms. They are inherently neutral and there's nothing wrong with disability. So we can use the word and we can talk about it. And then when talking about something that's accessible, just naming it as that, that it's accessible, accessible parking space, accessible door, fill in the blank and go from there. Shayjan S. Teammates, your keyword for this week is sunflower. I think those are the primary points for today. I was, as a callback to the video from a couple of weeks ago, I was going to tell a joke. <laughs> this is from the Tina Brimmel video where I was like, I have, <laughs> I have all this anxiety around telling jokes in front of people because of something that happened to me over 20 years ago. Uh, so if you missed that, you can watch that video here. And so I looked up jokes today and then I got all insecure because the joke that I thought was funniest seemed like it was also the silliest. And I was like, I can't get on YouTube and tell that, that joke. And then I was like, well, I'll pick a different one. But then the one that I picked, I didn't fully buy into because I didn't think it was as funny. And then I just second guessed myself as a whole and realized I obviously still need to do some more work <laughs> around that for myself. So not telling you a joke today. I would still be curious if you have jokes that you want to share with me. Maybe that'll help me to loosen up at some point and to come on here. I was like, it can be part of my weekly thing where I just tell a joke and I get over <laughs> my fear around telling jokes that I wasn't, I tried and I just couldn't quite bring myself to do it today. That's it for this week. That was kind of rambly. Your thoughts, questions, comments, anything below. Please subscribe, share our content if you like us, if you like me, and want other people to find it. And we'll see you next week. I did have a dream last night, so I'm not gonna tell you a joke, but I am gonna tell you about my dream because it was an amazing, not amazing, well, I'm just gonna tell you about my dream. It was very, it was vivid. It was kind of all over the place. I'm not exactly sure what that, tells me, but I was traveling somewhere. I don't remember where I was traveling to. I got to the airport. It was kind of a small airport. I knew that I was checking into the B gate or terminal, the B terminal. And it seemed like on the map that the B terminal, it was all in red. Like you could see the terminals and it was like green, 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 red. So I was like, that doesn't seem great. I go to get there and they had closed off that terminal. And there were like, it was totally cleared out and there were all of these security officers and like 50 dogs, like bomb sniffing dogs. And I was like, oh no, this, don't worry, my dream gets better. I was like, this is really not great. And they were all different kinds of dogs, which was interesting. So they clear it, it's fine, go back into the terminal. I am waiting for my flight, I'm standing in line and there's one dog that gets left behind and it's like kind of a mid-sized mangy mixed breed of a dog, kind of wiry hair. 
brown. I have very detailed, vivid dreams. And it's just lying on the floor in this one spot and won't move. And anytime like someone encourages it to move, it goes back and it lies in the exact same spot. So I'm like, hi, I think maybe this dog is on to something and we should pay attention to that. And someone comes over, they like lift up the floor and sure enough, there's a bomb. I don't know why I'm telling this dream on YouTube. This is much better in my mind. So my back is breaking into hives. I really think that the joke stressed me out. So there's a bomb under the floor and they found that like, we found it in time, disarmed it. Everybody was safe. And then off to the side from where that happened sitting was this really cute French man who then decided that he wanted to date me. It wasn't just any French man. It's a French man that I follow on Instagram. It's this French man. I went and like liked a couple of his videos this morning after the dream as a thank you for dating me in my dream. So yeah, it was like a terrible start to the dream. Like, but then it ended really well because we were saved from the bomb. I got the dog because he never got claimed. So I got this really amazing dog and I got a French boyfriend out of the deal somehow. And that was what I woke up to. That was very long and I don't, that really was so much better in my mind than when I verbalized it. This would have been better if I had just told a joke. I don't know why that was, it was less embarrassing to tell that joke than it was to tell my joke. <laughs>music out on the street these barn doors that are right here are not particularly sound proof and so when cars and all go by you can hear what they are listening to which is kind of fun for filming